What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Beautiful Build. I'm so happy I finally get to say this. Today is the episode where we start the jump a -con. We make the engine run for the first time. We, as I, as I say this right now, we are very, very, very far away from that point. We don't have any electrical in the car whatsoever. I just bought a battery this morning. Uh, we don't have a fuel system. We do have an engine. So we got our ways to go, but we're gonna make it happen. We are using like the top of the line hardware for this. We have a Holly Dominator ECU and a SmartWire PDM that we're gonna be going through the installation of today. And a bunch of, and a great fuel system as well, Detchworks fuel system that we're gonna be installing. We have a lot of great support from our great sponsors and it's gonna just make this build top quality using top of the line parts and overkill. Certainly overkill, but we don't wanna be stranded out there in the desert when we're racing around. So that's what's in store for today's episode. Stay tuned. I'm gonna be focused on the inside of the cab here. This is where a lot of my work is gonna be happening with the wiring. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and rip these seats out. The And I'm gonna go ahead and mount the ECU. So before you mount your ECU, you, you wanna check cable lengths for different cables. There are some cables in an ECU wiring bundle that can't be cut. The drive-by wire accelerator pedal that we installed in the last episode, that's one of those wires. So that kind of designated, between that and our drive-by wire throttle bodies actually designated where we have to mount the ECU, which is right there. Well, I mean, that's where I want to mount it given the space that we have. It's right behind the driver's seat. We have about a little over a foot of just empty space going all the way back here and it has easy access to the tunnel. So I think it's going to be a really good place to do that. Um, and you can see I've, I've been testing out lengths and stuff of wiring with my smart wire PDM as well. So anyways, figured out where things go. That's the very first step. Next step is to kind of mock them up in place and then we start running wires to everything. Out go the seats. <laughs> Got some room to work and got the Holly Dominator mounted up. This is a temporary mounting solution because we didn't have small enough bolts, but this is actually where it is gonna go. So this is a Holly Dominator. It's part of a Holly LS uh, kit that I got from them a while back. We were gonna use it on the single seater, but it turns out we're using it on this now. Um, shout out to Holly. They make the best ECUs in the business and a bunch of other great stuff, especially if you're looking to LS swap. So every product that we use between the, the Holly, uh, the, the Dominator ECU, the SmartWire, Smart pack and everything. I'm gonna put the links to in the description. So if you're thinking about trying to pull off an LS swap, you're gonna to wanna to check out all the links in the description and check out Holly. Huge thanks to them for all the amazing support that they're giving us on this build. It's, it's really incredible. It's a lot of really, really valuable, really great stuff that we wouldn't get to play around with uh, otherwise. So uh, if you see them on Instagram or something, I'll put their Instagram in the description below. Send them some love. Thanks, Holly. All right, let's continue. We can kind of look at wiring this vehicle going almost in two directions. So we have everything that goes from here back being the ECU that does the engine management and stuff like that. And then we have the smart wire made by Race Pack. And what this does is helps us kind of control everything else. Normal cars have a lot more buttons than you than you might really think. You got like blinker left, right, running lights, headlights, brake lights. That's not a button, that's a pedal. Uh, engine start, turn on the whole system. And you know, modern car manufacturers have done a really good job of combining those into you know one fluid motion. Obviously ignition on and then starting your key is just duh, 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 and uh, a lot of those other things. But when you're building a race car, it's kind of all step by step. You need a lot of buttons and they have to do a lot of different things and some of them involve each other. And that's where the smart wire comes in. It's a fully programmable box, it's a computer that helps you manage your power and where it's going. Helps you get rid of using a lot of relays and a lot of different switches. And I wish I had one of those when we did the BurntCon. And I'm really thinking about redoing the BurntCon with one of those. So the only thing is I, I don't know how it works. So I think I'm gonna do what's called bench testing it a little bit or just a bench trial and try and learn my way through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, the battery, some wires and a computer and the switch panel and go all beautiful mind on it try and think back to my computer programming days and uh, see if I can understand it a little bit more clearly. I read the instructions, but there's a difference between reading the instructions and applying the actual like software. So I'm gonna do that now. Well, 
Well, I thought this was gonna be hard. Turns out this is actually very, very easy. Uh, just follow the instructions, just did a basic wire up. And uh, so this is the um, Smart Wire Street Edition, Street Car Edition. It comes with the wiring harnesses. And what I didn't know is it comes with this thing pre-programmed. So that was really cool. The only add-on we did was the keypad. So I had to learn how to program the keypad. But basically all these wires are like everything we would ever need for this car. And they're all like pre-programmed. But some of them we want on the keypad. So I learned how to program the keypad just as a test this does uh you guys can't really see but there's a little bit of a backlight you can see right there and this turns it off and turns it back on that was just so i could make sure i know how to program the keys to do things so we got to do one more test which is um trying to figure out if we can have the ecu send a signal this is really cool like if if you guys don't know what these do basically you can send a signal into either of these bundles and then send an output power based on that signal through either of these bundles so say you were going from something under the hood or like say a brake pedal signal you could program any one of these wires you want to be the brake pedal signal that goes into the computer and says oh that brake pedal signal is on go ahead and send power to the brake lights and then make one of these wires brake lights and you could customize all that stuff with tons of customization so right now the ecu when the engine hits a certain temperature is going to send a fan signal uh, it's going to tell the the car to turn the fan on so that would be i don't know one of these wires in here and it'll go in it'll say hey we need to turn the fan on and then it sends power to the fan pump what are you guys doing back there <laughs> So I wanna do the one last test before I throw this all into the car and start wiring it in. And that's to see if I can use a keypad to override an input signal coming from the ECU into the PDM. The smart wire is a PDM. I don't know what PDM stands for, but it is one. Um, basically, the ECU is gonna say when the fan's gonna be on, but if the car dies, I want that fan, I wanna be able to switch that fan back off so I can use all the battery power to hit that starter. So I wanna be able to overpower the ECU signal with the keypad. So I'm gonna try and see if I can program that in there. It's like a double case clause on a signal. And then if I can do that, we're in business. All right guys, back for day two. Yesterday, I got very familiar with the smart wire. I'm really comfortable with it. I got the uh, switch pad done and that's all labeled and they're programmed in. Uh, so that's basically all programmed and set up for us to go. Today, I'm gonna try something really fun. I'm gonna try and wire the entire car in one day. I think between how easy the Holly's ECU harnesses and the smart wire is combined, I could pull this off, hopefully. So I'm gonna try and wire the entire car today. Wiring's kind of boring, so I'm not even gonna really time lapse it, but I will show you guys it all when I get done. In the meantime, we're gonna do some other things to get the car closer to running. We got a lot of stuff to do. Like the clutch, let's start with the clutch. guys don't mind the wiring mess like i said uh, midway through but the clutch is complete so that's our clutch clutch pedal the extension same way as we did it on the burnt con we've been able to test and drive that around and it, it does feel good and then you have the hard line that comes out of the clutch master right here runs through here under the car and then we're over here on the back now and it comes out right here from here it goes to a soft steel braided line that runs underneath and into the bottom of the transaxle to pressurize our clutch so that's the clutch system so kyle's going to be working on where we want to put our power steering reservoir and how we want to run our return lines the rest of the lines have to be made at a hydraulic shop he's going to start getting that going and oscar is going to be working on helping me mount the battery and start the beginning of the battery well, mounting the battery and the, running the battery negative to the chassis. And that way uh, it'll help me get a little bit closer to wiring, finishing wiring.
right guys, I'm back and I'm happy to say that I wired the entire car in one day. Your clothes are different. Two, two days. Three, three days? <laughs> Wired the car in three days. There was a lot of other small stuff to do. Honestly, I think I could have got it done in one day, but got pretty sidetracked. I'm really happy to say though, the quality is coming along great. I'm gonna show you the wiring in a second, but let's catch you up on what the guys have been working on on the side. Oscar did a great job mounting this battery. So he built a super beefy battery tray that can be removed and then a battery with a nice clamp down here. Uh, this is our positive terminal and he made these you know, this is like a giant, giant gauge wire that I ordered a ton of on eBay. And uh, it, so one of these runs inside to power the ECU and the PDM. Uh, that's this red one. And this black one runs underneath to go to the starter and the alternator. So uh, the battery situation is good. We got our grounding load here. That was a huge help on the whole wiring situation. Under here, you're going to see that we have a lot of power steering lines and they're almost all uh, completely ran. We just had a little bit of a snafu with some sizing of some end pieces, but the hydraulic lines go to the servo, which then go to the, uh, what I've been calling kind of the pop-off valve. It, it's a pressure relief valve that runs to the return line and goes all the way back to our reservoir right here. So you can see on our pump, we have our hydraulic line there. And then our reservoir, we have our return um, AN kind of in-shop built line right here. So we need to mount the reservoir next. I'm gonna have Oscar kind of mock up where it's gonna go. So we're getting the reservoir up as high as we can and in a good spot so everything is downhill from the reservoir. We did see your guys' comments about rotating the power steering pump. We're really hoping that won't be a problem. If it is, we'll just fix it, but we're hoping it's not gonna be because we're gonna put that up high enough. So the idea is to build a bracket that goes right there and then that gets hose clamped to the bracket for easy maintenance, easy removal if we have any issues with the power steering system. So that's the game plan for that. I'm gonna wrap up the wiring. It should only take me a couple minutes. That's what I said two days ago. Uh, and then I will give you guys the first glance at the test fire. I haven't tested any of this, so I probably should have slowed down a little bit on the wiring, but um, I'm just gonna finish buttoning it down and then we'll give it a test fire. All right guys, we got the power steering reservoir mounted up. Little hose clamps on a, on a metal kind of post. It's looking awesome, so that's good. Kyle tightened down all the hydraulic lines running through the whole car, so that's good. It is now time to go in and test the wiring. Well, I haven't showed you guys any of the wiring. Let me show you. The ECU is mounted right there, and now we haven't done any of the cosmetic stuff. We just got wires in place, because I want to test everything out, and then we'll do the cosmetics. The ECU goes right there. Wiring loom goes all the way back. It's fully modular, meaning we can just unplug it from the ECU and pull the engine back out that way. Some wires run through here, through here, and back up front to where we have the PDM under here. I decided to keep the spare wires because we know we're doing more expansion as we keep working on this car. We're adding more features. So I just bundled the spare wires up there. That's the PDM right there running to a power distribution block. And uh, then there's our Holly screen here and just a can wire running underneath the dash through here. And that's all of it. We got a few lines that are running out that I haven't bundled up yet. Those will get pinned back here that are uh, going out the back. So. Oscar, you playing some games on your phone over there, huh? <laughs> so, let's test some things out. Well, we can't test a ton of things out, but uh, we can test the uh, auxiliary and the ignition. So the ignition is gonna turn on the ECU. That was silent. Hopefully the ECU's on. Oh, yes, we know it's on because our little screen right here turned on. So. Uh, since the bigger screen, I don't know how much voltage it uses. I want to only turn on the bigger screen with a push button. So I've tied the bigger screen and our Garmin um, navigation is going to be on another button, which I'll show you in a second. So the ECU is on. You can see it's connected up right there. There's our mini dash. And then when we hit auxiliary, this guy should turn on. Should turn, turn on. <laughs> oh, man. All right, our auxiliary power is powered on. You can see we got the screen there. It was very, very easy to troubleshoot because with the smart wire, it's literally just one wire. So I checked the voltage on that one wire 
didn't see voltage, so I knew it was a problem uh, kind of inside the SmartWire computer. Dialed in with my laptop, and it was a program in my configuration of how I configured the SmartWire. I literally just forgot to assign that button. When I hit that button, it knew what to do, but I didn't tell it to do anything. So that was my fault. And now I told it to do the right thing, and we are up and running as we would expect. So you see the rest of those buttons, fuel, radiator, fan, start. To do those things, well, we need to have them in the car. So that's next. We're gonna finish pulling the engine out, and uh, this will be a good test. I'll let you know how long it takes. Now that we have everything wired in, you know, as you keep adding stuff to the engine, it takes longer to get in and out. On uh, the Burnticon, we're almost up to like it takes a whole day to remove the engine. So be interesting to see how long this takes. I'll time it, and we'll uh, bust it out. Engine's out. That took about seven to eight minutes, between seven and eight minutes to get the engine out. That's that's a really good time. We still have a few more things to add along the lines of fuel, but other than that, that's as hard as it's gonna be to get this engine out. Let's go get lunch. We're back from lunch, starting in on the fuel system. Oscar started in on the unboxing. Looks like Deechworks sent us a little goodie bag of some candy, which I will be eating right now. And uh, Kyle, some sunglasses for you. Some sunglasses for me. Oscar, you can have the shirt. Thank you to Deechworks. Our entire fuel system on this build is gonna be run uh, with Deechworks products. Deechworks uh, inline fuel, pump, fuel filters, injectors, all that good stuff. We're very proudly supported by Deechworks. We have run Deechworks products on all of our builds. They make great stuff. There's gonna be a link in the description. Huge thanks to them for supporting us on this build and we'll show you all the great stuff that they hooked us up with after we install it. So much good stuff about to be installed. This is the new Deechworks uh, 650 inline fuel pump, and it's a brushless inline fuel pump. So this is a brand new product. I don't even know if they have it out on the market yet, but they sent it to us for testing. This is the pump controller, fuel pressure regulator, fuel filter, all the fittings that we could possibly need AN, keeping us basically gonna keep the, 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 the supplies stocked in the shop because we can't use all of this possibly, and a bunch of 8AN hose. Everything on the rest of the engine and everything is 8AN. I've already outfitted our fuel pressure regulator with a digital fuel pressure gauge, so this will tell the ECU how much fuel pressure we have. Let's go ahead and install all this stuff real quick, and while we're in there, finish out this back end wiring. Quick update, I've ate all the candy. Oscar is stress testing the intake manifold. So far, it's holding up. We're running our fuel lines right now. Everything's looking good. Extending our fuel pressure sensor wiring harness. I just jumped back into the ECU and uh, ran through the setup to set it up for this engine, so hopefully that'll go well. Um, yeah, we're getting pretty close. We gotta put some fuel in and test the fuel system. We haven't exactly finished the fuel filler system. But uh, we, we can make this happen. Remember that time we were filling up the fuel and it like back spilled on you and exploded all over you. We had to get you new clothes. Yes, I remember. Yeah, that probably won't happen today. I hope not. Grabbing the fire extinguisher, solid move. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the car on and turn the fuel system on and look for leaks. Oscar, okay. if you'll hit the fuel button, please. You don't have to hit ignition, just fuel. All right, pump is running, just leave it on. Let's look for leaks. <laughs> so... I was reading the gauge, and it's reading negative fuel pressure. And the more we turn it on, the more we run it, the more we build negative fuel pressure. And then I asked Oscar, like, what if we put the fuel pump on backwards? And he just says, it's very possible. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's, uh... Figure that out. Yeah, Alright guys, pump might have been backwards. <laughs> so uh, Oscar's gonna go. yeah, go ahead and throw power onto the vehicle and we'll click this guy on and hopefully it'll be a whole different ballgame. So I'm gonna go ignition. That's gonna give me my fuel pressure gauge on the dash here, and then we'll turn on the fuel pump. Alright, ready? Yep, yep. 
All right, we're building fuel pressure this time. We're at 55 pounds. Wah! Let's look for leaks. Any leaks? Nope, no, no leaks. All right, I'm gonna turn it down. Power steering pump is filled up and uh, grounding straps have been installed. I believe we are ready for our first startup. This is exciting. Oscar thinks we're gonna get this on the first try. Oh, you jinxed us. <laughs> We, uh, we don't have mufflers on here yet. They are on the way. Holly shipped them out. We'll get them uh, day after tomorrow. So it's just an uh, exhaust manifold straight out. It's going to be loud. Very loud. I expect fireballs. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Yep, ready. Okay, ignition. All right, fuel. Fire. Oh, wait. Hold up. Oh, yeah. Okay, fire. This vehicle has drive-by wire throttle bodies, and they're unplugged. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> all right, starting. Oh, shit. Big fireballs. It sounds like our timing's off. I think our timing's off as well. All right, we shall troubleshoot and be right back. We figured out the problem. It's a pretty simple problem. We had the injector coil wires for, uh, say, let's say bank one and bank two. They were sw swip swapped around. Stip, stop, stip, stop, stip, stop. And they were on the wrong side. We lost the labeling on them when we did some extensions. So this is a lesson that we need to uh, buy a labeling machine and like actually make sure we have all our wires labeled. For a race car, you need to be able to do everything really quickly. You can't be guessing and checking. So we're gonna swap those around. The engine is most likely flooded now, so it's gonna be a little bit of a rough start, but I think it'll fire up. All right, fuel. And here we go, it's gonna roar. The car starts and runs, man, that is so awesome. We got a little bit of fine tuning to do, but man, we are there. I am jazzed. So we are racing um, one week from now, and we have to build a mini. So there's gonna be a lot of episodes coming at you guys quick, so stay tuned for those. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace! <laughs>